An insurance company determines vehicle insurance premiums based on known risk factors uh, and then charges accordingly. And interestingly, one of those factors is the color of your car. Um, the insurance company believes that people with some color cars are more likely to get into accidents. And so, to research this, they examine police reports for total loss collisions uh, and they find this data. Uh, and so, this is what's called a frequency table. And we're working here with categorical data, or in other words, qualitative data, data that is categories, uh, but it's not numerical data. And so, there w this frequency table tells me that there were 25 reports that involved a blue car. And so, from this large collection of reports, the frequency or the count of reports for each of these colors was recorded. And that's what a frequency table is. And so, the first thing we're going to do is try to create a graphical representation of this data. Uh, and one first one we're going to do is called a bar graph. A bar graph is, is reasonably simple. The idea is we have a horizontal and our vertical axis. Uh, and along the vertical is going to be our frequency. Uh, actually, let me write this a little differently. I'm gonna actually write, try to write it sideways here. Frequency. Uh, I didn't write that very well. Okay, and, and then we're going to create bars for each of our colors. Um, so this vertical axis is going to be an actual numerical axis and it's gonna have to go up at least past 50. Uh, in order for uh, me to be able to fit all this data in. So I think I'm going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, and then I'm going to need to go at least one more. So there's 55, uh, and I'll go ahead and toss 60 in here. So now we can draw a bar for each of our colors. Uh, so our blue cars, have a frequency of 25, so I'm going to draw a bar, and the, that bar is going to have a height of 25, right? And so this is going to correspond to blue cars. So now I'm going to draw a, a bar for green cars, and it needs to have a height of 52, which is right around here. And I'm just sort of estimating here. Typically, eh, Software packages like Excel uh, is a common one, uh, or even something like Google Docs is used to create these graphs rather than trying to draw them by hand. Uh, but you know, for the sake of illustration here, we'll go ahead and we'll try to draw this by hand. And so there's our red cars, which have a height of 41. Uh, and then you would continue this on for the other colors. And our resulting gr uh, bar graph will look something like this. Now. You can tell that it's kind of hard to tell where the, um, you know, where the bars are here. And so one solution to that would be to put in grid lines, which would look something like, like that. Um, and you know, put those every, you know, five or ten spaces. Uh, so that, that'd be one option. Ooh, I did not mean to do that. Hold on, there we are. Uh, so that would be one option for dealing with <coughs> the, <laughs> ah, sorry, uh, for dealing with this issue. There we go, good enough. Uh, another option, and probably a little simpler, would be to just uh, put at the top of each bar what the corresponding frequency is, and that way somebody reading the graph could easily identify the, the, the frequency of each of the bars without having to, um, you know, look horizontally. Now, the, the advantage of the graphical display, of course, is that it makes it very clear visually what the relative sizes uh, of these quantities are. And so this would be a bar graph for categorical data.